From running around the Starfall Islands, to exploring the ancient history of the Coco, here is why Sonic Frontiers is one of the saddest Sonic games in history. And now, let me explain to you why. Now, I will be honest, I absolutely do love Sonic Frontiers. From its awesome combat scenes, to the Titan scenes, to its open world, Sonic Frontiers has a lot to offer. But with that comes the dark plot and the history of the game. And we will start with the Coco. Now, it's easy to dismiss the newly introduced Cocos as ripoffs from, from the Legends of Zelda Breath of the Wild Koroks. It's true that their design bears a passing resemblance to their collectible forest spirits. And they give severe similar functions. But being found and given to the Elder Coco to boost Sonic's attributes. However, Cocos have a considerably different role in the Sonic universe than just taking care of the isolated Starfall Islands. As we learn by progressing through Sonic Frontier's main story, Cocos are used as the container in the spirits of the ancient race. This alien species was fleeing from the destruction of their homeworld by the end, when their Chaos Emeralds began responding to the Master Emerald on Earth. All the machines and infrastructure found on Starfall Islands were in efforts to rebuild and defend the ancient civilization from the pursuing end. The four titans were the most successful of these efforts and managed to seal the end within the Titan Supreme and cyberspace, but not before the ancient race was completely wiped out. Appearing in flashbacks is either the core of the ancient's history or some sort of common accessory, the Cocos are all that's left of them. Only a handful of them have fully maintained their sense of self, though the rest do behave similarly to the people they once were. With no motive to leave their island homes, the Coco seem to like their revelance to Sonic has run its course. However, astute fans have noticed that they not only resemble Koroks from Breath of the Wild, but Sonic Adventure's Chow as well. As hinted at a scene from Knuckles' animated Divergence pro Prologue, there is a subtle link linking these two adorable mascot species together. Chows and Cocos are essentially two sides of the same coin. A small contingent of the ancients fled to the resting place of the Master Emerald with the Chaos Emeralds in tow, both in an attempt to save themselves and potentially harness the Emerald's power. However, for unknown reasons, the Master Emerald instead developed them into Chow that Sonic fans now know. One particular Chow later mutated into Sonic Adventure's antagonist, Chaos, regaining something close to its appearance in the Ancient and becoming the Chaos's protector. It's unknown if these two races of the Ancient Remnants will ever meet on screen, but at least Sonic Frontiers players will remember any time that Coco and Chow come up. Throughout the story, we also learn the history of a new enemy called Sage. Sage seems to be evil to start off with, but before you all start hating her and this new character, let me explain Sage's backstory first. Sage, before the events of Sonic Frontiers, was a simple AI that Eggman created to hack into the Ancient's tech so that he could harness it all for himself. Once her code reached cyberspace, she was affected by its power and discovered the sealed away evil that lurked inside. Her code rapidly changed, and with the understanding of the coming danger, she purposefully trapped Eggman in cyberspace to protect him. Protecting Eggman is her priority, and he demands for Sage to find a way out. She constantly tells him there is no way to remove him safely. Due to her integration into cyberspace, she was given sentience, and was able to take on the appearance of a human girl. With her newfound free will, Sage seems to find comfort in the fact that she is one of Eggman's creations. With the base protective functions manifesting as viewing the antagonist-like family. However, Dr. Eggman talks to her like any way other lackeys for in the majority of the game. Which leaves Sage to feel like she's alone. This leaves her to cry when she sees Sonic and Tails' brotherly relationship. However, to quote Eggman himself from Sonic and the Lost World, 
He's a complicated guy. While he orders Seizure Round, he's also recording audio logs of, in, of his time in cyberspace. And these are called Egg Memos. They reveal much more about what's going on. They quickly take a turn from being about a situation Eggman finds himself in, to being all about how helpful Sage is. Once Eggman catches himself, calling Sage she, only to correct himself that she's just a program, his attachment is very clear. The Egg Memos were lost in cyberspace, and players can get their hands on them by f fishing with Big the Cat from Sonic Adventure. They play a big role in understanding what's happening between Eggman and, Sage's, and Sage, but due to the fact that they're optional, some cutscenes still hint on what's going on. When Sage protects Eggman from some digitalized versions of GUN Militia, he says that he's very proud of her, which signifies just how much of the bond they're changed. It's unclear if Eggman and Sage actually had a conversation about the fact that they saw each other as family. But Eggman calls her his daughter, and he watches her fly into battle. Despite not knowing her creator felt about it, she refers to him as her father in the scenes and he does not appear. Regardless, the true ending for Sonic Frontiers is evidence that these two will most certainly treat each other as family even if Sage does return. Hopefully she will as thanks to her sympathetic storyline about her wanting to take care and protect her father. She's won over the hearts of many fans, not having Sage return after players worked so hard to unlock the true ending would definitely upset who adored her development with Dr. Eggman. And now you know why Sonic Frontiers is the saddest Sonic game in history. Thank you for watching.